What up guys? It's time for some arena onits. Sadly, I don't think we have the Afidus update yet while I make the video. I think we have like a pass today, but they didn't implement the boss yet, which sucks. I don't know if it's gonna... <laughs> they might do that tomorrow when, when I release this video, but anyway. I've had a good day, a little bit busy. We're starting 30 minutes late, but there's still there's still one and a half hours left, so I think we're good. Interesting Platinum Arena reset push this week. If you didn't see the video I made about it, like not talking about the stream, but a separate video, we saw multiple geese marks in top 20 this week with this kind of new addition, and basically he was not used in classic arena defense at all, and I think this is literally just because of the pinpoint set, kind of changing things, and we only saw one Lazarus in the entire top 30, there used to be maybe 10 or so in the top 30, sometimes maybe even more, but it used to be one of the like Siegfund and Lazarus were the two most popular nukers in defense for a while, but now Lazarus is almost completely gone and replaced with nice. My, my ba I hate ASMR, but it's kind of hard to avoid it if you drink or eat at the same time. If you don't have the microphone loud and close, it just sounds way worse. Mm, yeah, I think we'll go with the chicken. I, I noticed that like pretty much in every other video the sound is way better than in the other ones and that mostly has to do with the fact that in some videos I have the microphone like I don't know 10 centimeters closer to my mouth and in some videos I don't and that makes a huge difference. I think we should just go UDK, yeah. I was thinking about second reviver, but let's go with UDK. I don't think he wants to ban more. I think he's probably still gonna ban the UDK. Yeah. But yeah, considering that I I got the good microphone for making videos, I might as well use it properly and not intentionally sabotage my audio. I don't think it matters really for most people. If you don't like if you don't try to listen it closely, you you will not notice it. But if you're listening it, you can clearly see the difference. It's like massive. I don't think I really ever really like uh, know these differences between the audio quality before I was making videos and these days I can like I will notice it much harder if somebody has kind of scuffed audio even if it's not like completely scuffed but if it's like a little bit scuffed and somebody has very good one I, I can now tell the difference that I couldn't before anyway Hmm. It's not looking good. I don't think can, I don't think we can get any turns on that. Nar Narcissus, it looks like. They're just locked out and dying before yeah. Dying before that. Okay, it's first battle, first loss happens. 
Maybe I should have picked Ankara instead of Necret and maybe gotten my cooldowns back. I think that's the only, only way we could have done this. I needed more for the um, CC too. Maybe I should have gone with Rodotos, <laughs> regardless of the Harima, because he could have taken a couple of hits, even if he lost the stone skin. Gordon Hawk's Joker. I think I battled this guy a few times before. Probably many times now that I think about it. Okay, Taras Meritska matchup, I'll take it. It's one of the easier matchups, honestly, so I'd much rather deal with this than Galatir, Grixia, Marius, Siegfrund, Nice, Gomidus, you know, all of the meta stuff. This actually feels way easier in com comparison to those, at least for me. Maybe for some other people this is harder matchup, but I'd rather deal with this. Rodos is very good against these comes, especially when they pick already multiple champions. I guess, you know, he can't go UDK, he could still pick our base. Oh, he's going with bombs. Interesting. Hmm. We're kind of in a checkmate here that we either have to ban the Astralit or the Armands, but we, we have to let him have the Astralit. I mean, there's just no way. Mm, oh, yeah, he, he banned my Duchess. Duchess was not in stone skin. Everybody else ex except Narcissus is in stone skin. Duchess would have been in bolster too, so I don't know. I think I'm just gonna die to the bombs before I get the turn. For some people, these teams are very easy to deal with, but I kind of get screwed by the bombs all the time. I don't really have good solution to them. Okay, so far so good. My mod was tanky enough. I guess he doesn't have very high damage on Astralic because my mod is not that tanky. She, she has like 500 accuracy. She's only like 120k health or something like that. And she survived barely. And she took one bomb off from the other target. So I think we might be okay. I'm not quite sure. At least we're gonna get a turn here. And he used the strengthen and shield. So we're gonna nuke everybody. I don't think he can one shot my Narsus now. I want to say I'm good, but it still looks kind of bleak. He, can he kill both Narsus and. No, okay, yeah, I should be good, I should be good. Okay, Rodos is back. Mord is gonna take a couple hits now. I, I think we're good. Very close, actually, but it it wouldn't have been close at all if my mod got one shot. I'm kind of surprised that uh, she didn't. I don't think she usually survives that. I don't think my Ankara was like 30, 30k health higher than that. She doesn't normally survive the bombs. I mean, he doesn't have attack buff, of course, but I was in stone skin. Yeah, honestly, I would have preferred like Taras, Meritska, and then something else than bombs. The bombs kind of hit too close. 
if it was like a George, which would have been kind of strong and popular team in the past, George's matchup wouldn't have been that bad with Rodas and UDK. But bombs were quite quite bad. But by the way, I don't know how Maud survived it, but this battle was carried by Maud. If Maud didn't survive, everybody would have died to the bombs before they got a single turn. Only reason that the other people survived was because Maud went first and cleansed one bomb from UDK and Narsus. I mean, Rodos too, but Rodos died anyway. Since you take increased damage if you have stone skin and my Rodos only has like 63k health. I think Narsus is like double of that. But yeah, I've been shilling for Maud for a while, and I will continue to do so. I'm very happy with Maud, but my Maud gear is kind of not really completed yet. I need to chaos dust her gear and optimize it a bit more. And she still has like flat attack, ring and amulet, I think. Or I think 5 star amulet and flat attack ring or something like that. Or, or the other way around. Let, I'll double check. Um. Let's see. Yeah, here's what I'm running on mod. 120k health, 3.8k defense, 276 speed and... 450 accuracy, so we're kind of high on accuracy and not fully optimized on everything else. We could maybe drop a little bit accuracy to get more health, or primarily I just want her to be more tanky. I don't really want to drop accuracy, but I might have to do it a little bit. But the most important part on her, I think, is that you want her to be in stone skin, and you want her to be the fastest champion in your team. At least faster than your new girls, but probably the fastest one. We'll go with this and Ankara as the last pick if he lets us have it. I always speak about it, but one of the best ways to counter mythic champions is just using the affinity against them. And Grixia happens to be able to weak it on both Rotos and Ankara, which are some of my most popular champions. I guess Armands too, but Armands is usually banned. But if we get some weak hits here, it's actually, you know, it's a very big deal. And as you can see, most of our champions are magic, so we're gonna have at least two of them, or probably two. Hmm, Taras or Alaspan? I'm not quite sure. I think we go for the Alaspan in, in case he bans Narsus. I think he's gonna ban Armands, but even if he doesn't ban Narsus, Rodos can weak hit on Alas and it can be annoying. He might go for. Okay, didn't. He. I was gonna say that he might go for Narsus ban though if he was confident that his Grixia would be faster and that I wouldn't ban it. By the way, I think I mentioned this on the stream. There's, you know, there's gonna be some sponsored content in the recent uh, times. Uh, I know some people kind of get mad every time there are sponsored videos, but the two next sponsored content that I do 
Um, I like both of those products, just so you know. Like, I I would have been down to honestly do videos about them, even if I didn't get anything of it. So D don't um, don't rule out th those. Um, Maybe I shouldn't say yet what they are, but don't rule out those next two sponsored videos. They are both useful services and I recommend them. <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'm shilling for them too much since I'm recommending them, but one of the products is not um, relevant for me personally. One of them is, and it was actually super good. I I was using it a lot when I was <laughs> I was enjoying the crawfish party, but more of that later. I, th I think there's always like mixed response when I have sponsored videos. I think people are more okay with uh, like um, like pre-roll ads on videos instead of entire sponsored videos. But there's always like kind of split sentiment that some people are super positive and happy that like we're getting paid, like me and other people that do them. And then there's always some people that get really mad about it. So. I was kind of hoping that I would win that battle, but it didn't go too good. Basically, today is hopefully the last video before we get the new updated Avidus. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> sure if Avidus is going to be that game-breaking for me personally. I said it before that I think he might be better in speed teams than my setups, because if you can get burns first on your team, maybe with Gizmak or Sulfurion or any other burner, if you can do that first, then Aphidus actually has insane nuke now. It's super insane, since it's AoE nuke and it gives you attack buff, that, that's that's huge. I mean, that that's not... Um, that, that's one shot if you don't have stone skin. Uh, I usually go with the Narsus and Angora or Mord, but let's go with Rotos and UDK. Since he already picked the Wukong, might as well go with this. Mix it up a little bit. Ronda used to be super popular not that long ago, even like, even this year she was meta in Live Arena, but she has kind of totally fallen out, I don't think I hardly ever see anybody using her. Even George it is not that common anymore, but Ronda is basically never used. And you usually see both of them in same type of teams. Yeah, I think we'll... Yeah, let's go with Galleus and... Rot both of them are in stone skin, Rotos and Galleus. And she could weak hit against Galleus, so I, I think it's fine. What reviver do we even want here? I think we'll go with the Duchess actually this time. Duchess Whale might be... useful against those champions. Okay, Ramonto. I hope he doesn't ban my Duchess. I feel like he's gonna ban my Armands, and my Duchess is in Bolster, so maybe that works out. I'm kind of tempted to actually go for the Sifi ban and not the Ramantu. Let's try this one. Okay, nice. As long as we can get the 10 on, like, anybody. <laughs> as long as we can get a 10 on any of the Nougars. We will get Keyless instantly. And since he doesn't have the immunity or defense buff or anything like that, I think even on Galleos it's gonna be one shot, even without defense buff. I mean, this, this is a super squishy team, so <laughs> if it's not one shot, it would actually look kind of bad. Okay, one of them lost Stone Skin, but that's not game over. 
As long as one of them gets a turn, I'm I'm good. What? He's going for my Duchess first and not not the Nogars. My Duchess is pretty beefy, so. I, I think really good John just could one shot my Duchess, but even for them it would be RNG. If they didn't get Helm Smasher proc, I don't think even a strong Ron does. Um, they're definitely not guaranteed to kill my Duchess. They need Helm Smasher procs to do it. Okay. That, that fight is already over. Let me show you my Duchess build. It's not that different than before, but it's it's slightly different. I don't have her in 4B stone skin anymore. I used to run 4B stone skin and 4B bolster for a good while. But um, we, it was kind of because of the bomb teams, honestly. And since I'm using both Mode and Ankor a lot now, I already have two revivers in stone skin. And I kind of wanted to have one that is not even in 4B stone skin. She's not really tankier than she would be actually in a stone skin. It will be pretty much the same stats, but we do have good, good tankiness. It's not, you know, enough against really strong hits, but we are kind of tanky and kind of fast. Though, as you can see, we have defense as Kenshin on the gloves. I definitely want to switch that to HP, but I need to accumulate a lot of chaos just because I don't want to gamble on it. And there's just too many things to do right now that fixing those gloves is not the biggest priority for me, even though it would be kind of decent upgrade to get like 4.5k more health on Dutchess. It's actually quite a lot now that I think about it. Justice has pretty good base health. Okay, what do we have on Reddit today? By the way, I hate Dungeon Divers events so much. Like, they are always so hard to do, it's super annoying. Um, yeah. I can't, I can't stand them. They are always the worst thing to do in fusions. If there's like, if I can skip one event, it's always gonna be one of the Dungeon, di dungeon Divers events. They are not reasonable, but I guess, you know, you're meant to use gems on them, but I still... I don't like it. K kind of beating on like a dead horse, but I complained about it many times. That I understand that things are working for Plarium, and I'm sure they know what they're doing, and it's based on numbers and statistics. But I feel like they're often making the game too hard for new players. I don't think fusions should be something that most players cannot do. I think basically everybody should be able to do them if they play actively during that time. Even new players. And I tried the new, like, um, multiple of the new, like, similar gacha games that were released in the recent times. And in those, even as a new player, you can totally do fusions. Watcher of Realms was the good example. That I played the game, like, the, the week that I started playing the game, and I think I started like two months late or something like that. The week I started, there was a fusion. And I, th I think it started like two days after I started playing. And I was totally able to do it without buying any packs or anything like that. And it wasn't even that hard. Like, I just did the events and it was totally good enough to finish. I think I even had some, you know, extra extra tokens at the end. Let, let's save the second Nougar as the last pick and maybe he lets me have the Rodos, but I feel like he might actually go with the UDK since he already got the Wukong. So I, I forgot what this blessing is called. 
But he's running the Wukong in the Stone Skin. <laughs> Killing Blessing. I feel like that one sucks. I hardly ever see anybody using it. By the way, I know that some people hate Steven Crowder, but Change Your Mind meme is one of my favorites. It, it's, it's a good one, I, I really like it. And you know, it's very basic, but I like it. I don't know, do they do the Change Your Mind anymore? I remember seeing that like years ago and people were like being, being like super angry about it, but I don't think I've seen or heard about them in a long time. Not that I, you know, follow him that closely, but I have seen those videos before. Uh, we don't really have to ban Yumeko. We could go for any ban. Almost could, could go for Wukong ban, honestly. That that might be kind of safe, safe way to play it. Let's try this. I think actually... Wukong is the biggest threat here. Seeing CC saying hybrid fusion is the hardest, but how is it harder than traditional fusion? That's what I thought too, but I honestly I don't I don't really pay attention to the fusions as much as some other content creators do. I think they cater more for like new players and I don't really do that. I probably should, like, I definitely should do more content for new players, but I'm just not very natural at it. But, you know, I don't really plan, I just look at the events and do them, but I still complain that they are too hard. But I'm pretty sure, at least in my experience, I mean, the normal fusions are the hardest ones. I think we're good. I, I don't think he has enough enough damage on Leorios to kill my team fast. And even though he basically has double lockout, we do have Polymorph, double reviver and Angkor. So I feel like it is doable. But let's see. M mode passive is just so so strong against Galatir. Damn, I think his Leorios is barely gonna go before my Rotos. Okay, definitely now with the Galatir A1. Okay, he's done, not doing it. Okay, not looking good. We kind of need some polymorphs. I mean, we, we could have polymorphs, the Leorios or Galatir, and that could have sealed the deal, but I don't think we're getting one now. I guess Leorios A1 could still rock the polymorph, but I'm very low. Well, I might get the revives up though. Wait, how, how did he have the nuke? I, I thought he didn't have the nuke yet. I, I think we're still done. Right? Surely. Nice, nice. Can we get one more turn? Please don't do Leorios A1 book. Anybody else than Leorios, come on. Okay, that that's fine. Ah, what? This Leorios has like infinite nukes. 
But I, he has Humeco, but I guess he just did the Humeco Razor to be fair. But I feel like he must have proxed like Refresh or whatever the master is called because that Leorios was just spamming the AOE nukes non-stop and I don't think we saw any A1s at all. A little bit slow day. This is gonna be healing session, not not the arena domination video. <laughs> I'm I'm not very you know creative, so <laughs> every video ends up being arena domination. If you guys have have any good suggestions, then hit me up. But if you don't, I guess we're gonna get a lot more arena domination videos. Oh yeah, tomorrow we have the CVC, then I can pull all of my mystery shards and maybe I get lucky. Damn, I kind of don't want to go with the rooster here because of that pesky Marius. Should I go with Candy? I can't even use Necrot because... Let's go with Candy. I can't even use Necrot because of the Narcissus. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to ban it. But th this is basically a do or die any anyway, so... We're not even gonna... Peak a Reviver. I kind of need polymorphs. I don't think I can win this outside of polymorph prox. He, he has very fast nukers too, but pro prob yeah, probably I'm still faster, but he has the speed out and I don't. I was kind of surprised that both of his nukers are faster than mine, but then when I thought about it for a second, oh yeah, they, they get 20 speed. Is he just gonna do a one? Yeah, okay. Thought so. But the thing is that even when he boss trips the block damage, we're still gonna get the defense buff. So it's not like Heligat is gonna be completely useless here. Nice, but he does have double cleanse, so... Oh fuck, it's not gonna do it. And he removed the frostbite with the mastery proc. <sighs> Angora is so annoying. I can, I can kill both of the nukers, but Angora is gonna decimate me. And I'm not sure if I can kill Angora with the A3, I mean... She has bone armor and strength and defense buff. Maybe if we proc the Helm Smasher, but maybe not even... Yeah, okay. That definitely was without the proc. I would have killed Ankora and then done A2 on Narcissus, but I think now it's definitely game over. Oh, we survived that. Some 
Somehow I didn't get the extra turn. Okay. Wait. Well, yeah, we're not doing good this time. Four losses, two wins. Fuck. Not gonna be top 100 anytime soon. What's the cutoff for top 100? 7.3k points. So I'm like um, 1.4k off. That's gonna be a lot of battles. Unless I start improving my win rate drastically, but that doesn't seem like it's gonna happen yet. I was thinking, are we gonna get the seeds updates on the next batch? I mean, they they had some update about it or announcement, but I think it was like their plan. I don't think they said it's gonna be in the next batch. I think it's good, but I would rather have live arena update than seeds update, honestly. If I can go for the Mario span here, I think I'm just gonna do it even if he picks a lockout, as long as he doesn't pick Haruma. I think we're good. Okay, Ankara. He's gonna get a lot of buffs. The Taras is gonna nuke hard, but we still have the stone skin at the start of the battle, so he can't instantly one shot the mod. I, I think we're good. I think we're good. I get any turns on either Rotos or Narsus, and we're gonna be fine. If Rotos gets like um, one turn, I'm gonna one shot like Mariska and Ankara, I think. Damn. He did almost kill the Rotos Stone skin, so even though it didn't seem like he was doing a lot of damage, he did hit very hard. But he's also gonna get hit hard. Can we remove the stone skin? Nice, nice. We could. Uh, I feel like I'm not gonna kill the dot the Maritska anyway, so. Might as well stall it and go for the Angora kill. Maybe I could have killed the Maritska with the A3, but we didn't want to risk if we get the Helm Smasher proc or not. Now it buys me like some time. I can turtle a little bit and get my cooldowns back. Oh, it, it died from that. Maybe it would have died to the A3. It didn't seem that tanky marriage car.
Damn, that, that Angora is very squishy. I mean, it was like level 56, so it's not maxed out, of course, but even outside of that, it's not very tanky. Finally a win. We are still one down even we, if we get this one. And honestly, I kind of feel bad about losing this one because I think I have a lot of better gear than this guy. I'm kind of surprised that he's this high, this high ranking, honestly, because his champions seem very squeezy. Though, I mean, I guess he does have the Ukraine duo and Sifi, but even with that, he does seem very squeezy. Okay, that definitely settled their deal. There's no way we can lose at this point. Okay, two more and then we are on the positive, but I, I don't even feel feel good about beating this guy. I almost feel, feel bad about beating him. He, he should have gotten even easier opponent than I was. By the way, I'm looking at my Discord and people are talking about solo stones and mythic shards. I think it kind of goes without saying. I think probably most people agree. But if you're like low spender or small spender or no spender, I definitely would not invest in souls. Of course, it's good if you can get your champions blessings but first of all you can't even buy split souls for mythic champions and those are the best ones right now if anything i would just buy mythic shards i mean voids can be good if you get like sifu for live arena or marisco for classic arena but that's pretty much it i mean sure there's a couple other good ones but those are the main two top tier ones to get and pretty much every every other like Astier champion is gonna be mythical. So if you're gonna spend anything, I would definitely go for the mythics. Unless there's like a guaranteed Harima event, that one I would definitely go for if you don't have her, but that's pretty much it. Th that's a promise for Plarium, even though I'm not really planning to buy any shards for a while. But if they do a guaranteed Harima, th that's one event that I would not be able to resist, to be honest. Th that probably goes without saying though, so not, not breaking news here. It would, I feel like it would al almost be kind of smart thing for Plarium to do guaranteed Harima, because I think so, so many people would go out of her way to get her and I think those people that would like well super hard to get her they're already gonna have her she's not like mythical champion or void M might as well sell me one harma Should I go with Mikage? Let yeah, okay, let's just go with her. I was gonna say let me double check that he's she's geared, but I'm pretty sure Mikage is geared. I was changing her build a while ago, and I put her in Storm Skin and Protection instead of full protection. No, okay, fuck. She's in full protection right now. This is not the build that I was planning to use against this guy. Oh, and he even got the Marius. Damn. That, that means we kind of must go with Rodos instead of 
Galleus. I think I'm screwed. <laughs> There's no way I can win this battle. Arima, Lockout and Marius. What? I went first. Kind of surprised, I think that I'm faster than his um, lockout. But I, I guess since we did go first, then we then we must just risk the end people and switch the form, since we can get stuns on them. I think Nars has just got 10 meter boost from Masteries, and I guess it might go before Maud, even though. Mord is faster than, than the Narsus. Mm, yeah, th that's, a, that's a little bit bad, but it would be two turns instead of one if we didn't have the mod. And she is faster than Narsus, like 30 speed faster, but I think he got 10 meter boost. Okay, th this time at least we went before Narsus. One shot? Okay, not even close. I think, like, surely we didn't get any Hell Smash or Prox there. Like, I feel like that should have been enough damage. His team isn't that tanky, it's actually a very squishy looking team and. The Warlord seems to be more tanky than the Elva, which is kind of weird. Can we do it? If I go after Harim, I'm done. Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, it's, it's over. Yeah, th three turns lockout, there's no way. Surely there's no way. His main hooker is out of the competition though, and Marius is barely dealing any damage at all on my dodges. Oh fuck. One turn sheep. Okay, okay, I, I give up, there's no way. <laughs> okay, looks like we're today just letting the enemies have some wins and not being too hard, of th hard on them. Next time, I think next live arena video, when we get the Aphidus buff, I'm definitely gonna try that. But probably regular my Sulfurion 
for it again. But I'm not super big fan of using Sulfurion in Live Arena on my account, because I'm not gonna be able to make him super fast anyway, and everybody has multiple champions in Immunity that are super fast, so... I don't think that's gonna work out, but maybe I can just use Aphidius without um, a separate parent champion. Maybe if you have Gizmok and Aphidius, that might be super insane though. That, that's gonna slap so hard. I need to I need to ask somebody that has Gizmok and Aphidius. I almost want to try try that combination. Somebody was saying to you that I could make a Teox video on their account. I kind of wanted to do that for a while. I don't think people that are not in the circles and don't have Teox, I don't think people quite um, are fully aware how OB Teox is right now and how meta-defining it is in the classic arena offense. People are just running like Teox, Sulfurion, uh, Ramantu and Lazarus, and I guess you could have some tweaks on it. I've seen some people running it with double Lazarus, some people run it without, without any Lazarus. But with that basic template, you buff strip everything, you lock them out with Ramantu, and you can't get Polymorph. That's super OP. And Deox just kills everybody. Or you run a double nuker and Deox doesn't even need to do that since you also have the Lazarus. Ang Fuck, what about do I pick here? Datsis? What a big Angora. <laughs> yeah, he already has it. If I go with Datsis, I have the band there. Yeah, okay, I'll go Justice and abandon Arsis. There's no other options now. Even if he picks a second lockout champion, we we're committed to the Narsis ban at this point. Since I have got Justice in Bolster and there's no way anybody could su survive the nuke if I ran that against it. Kind of surprised that this guy is running Glaikat, but his team does look very strong outside of it. Like, you know, Grixia and Harimat, that's a deadly combination. Okay, that, that takes care of everything. Literally, all we need is that and we're good. I can get turns, I can do damage and we're good. I mean, it's not like I can kill, I can kill them, but I didn't think I was gonna get, get a single turn against them. But now, now we're gonna get multiple. Okay, we broke it instantly, but ah, oh, fuck, so close. I was gonna say that. Can we still kill it? But it's not too bad. Damn, I wish my my Gauntlet would go before Ankara though, but Ankara is gonna go before it and cleanse everything. If we could cut in now, that would be... What? What? Did he use the Ankara shield already, or did he misclick? Okay, now I'm confused, but... Um, we can literally just do A1 right now on... Um, Gauntlet, and it would be AoE, but... If we do the A3, it's also gonna be AoE, and we're gonna reset the cooldown, but in either case we're gonna do some damage. I think we're good. She's not gonna get the lockout back fast enough that we can't end this. Uh, we're still gonna go before the Harima on Galos. Yeah, let's go for Angora. I don't think I could kill the Harima even if I didn't weak it. Oh fuck. Never mind, it's already going back to the lockout form. Nice, nice. 
we barely survived on Carlos. Okay, it was super close. We barely won it, but we did. I'm kind of, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel. I'm, like I said on the stream today, I'm a little bit washed up. I'm not super hardcore end game unkillable arena boss anymore. I'm, I'm kind of like a journeyman washed up raid arena X player. So. But Marius in a few days, Copium. I mean, Marius is gonna be good. I mean, don't don't get that twisted. Marius is gonna make make some changes. The issue is that I don't even have stone skin accessories for one set on Skinwalker, sadly. And I kind of would want to have two defense snookers in that. But even right now, my Galleos is in Ada Green. It would be a lot better if I would have 4 piece stone skin on Marius, but I don't know when I'm gonna get it or not. I feel like I've generally had pretty decent RNG on gear, but I think on stone skin accessories it's just not going in my favor. It seems like everybody has every nuker in 4P stone skin and I hardly have like any of them in it. Just Rotos and I feel like Rotos is the one nuker on my account that at least needs to get the 4P stone skin. I would rather give it to any of, any of the other nukers that I'm using. I mean, it's good, we're not gonna get CC'd. Some champions like Ronda can totally one shot Rotos, but oftentimes he could take a turn even without it. And probably, probably some of my other nukers can't, especially when I'm going second and I'm getting locked out and I don't have any defense boss or anything like that. Oh, speaking of Ronda, but Ronda isn't gonna be so like I just said, because we do have the 4P stone skin on Rotos. Uh, what do I want to pick? I, I feel like I pretty much can pick whatever I want here. What, what would be good though? M maybe, okay, maybe that was a dumb, dumb pick. Oh, he, yeah, okay, he still went for UDK. Maybe I should have just gone with the Dutchess and got a double reviver. But Gallows is in stone skin, so if he can take a turn, and his team is not that tanky, so, so it might be good if he survives. If not, then <laughs> then it's gonna suck. Damn, G G Gizmoak looks so cool in that image. Nobody clicked my Gizmark clickbait thumbnail, th thumbnail today, even though I, I thought that Gizmark looks very cool, but I guess you guys disagree. I don't know why, I thought that video would be interesting and people would would want to see it, but it, it totally bombed. <laughs> Nobody was interested of my classic arena meta video. Now. It's always a little bit, you know, like a kick in the balls when one video does super poorly. And it often doesn't make sense. Like, very often, and of course it, it doesn't mean anything, it's just my subjective bias. But often it feels like videos that are like good videos. I'm not saying that video was particularly good. But often some videos that I think are really good, nobody watches them. And then some random videos are much more popular, like every chart pool video is way popular than most other videos that I do. And often I do like some guide that I thought would be very interesting and useful and nobody cares.
people people want to see see live arena and shark pool videos Th that's about it for my channel i'm not quite big enough that people click any video that i put out like ash or hell hades or whoever people who are really clearly clearly clicking mostly on my live arena and recently the shark pool videos I'm starting to become a professional shark puller like many people in Mac, like uh, Smiley TK and um, Husky, and used to be um, what's his name? Another Russian content creator that quit. I can't remember his name. The guy who pulled goddamn five void champions on a table. RDD, RDD. He, he's also. <laughs> He's the biggest professional chart puller in in MAD. Maybe not the one that does most chart pull content or anything like that. I don't think he's done content for a long time, but goddamn, five five legendaries on a ten pull voids. And I, there was two good ones too. I maybe three. I, I forget what what was the one that he got, but there was definitely Sifi in that and something else really good too. Okay, what's up with, with with that name? Are we playing RuneScape or Raid? The, the, this reminds me of the of the old days of PvPing or PKing in RuneScape, and everybody was using those barcode names, including me. It's like full of uh, like ice and else, and you can't tell the difference. But there's no reason to do that in Raid. That that makes sense if you're scamming in runescape or you're doing pvp so that people can't recognize you but outside <laughs> i don't think it serves any purpose in raid if you do something bad in the chat i mean the more charge is gonna click you and ban you it's not like they need to identify your name What is he doing with Lucera team? I feel like we might meet a bon bomb matchup again. Let's go with Necrot, like kind of preemptively. Yeah. So I already have two stone skin Nogar, so. If he just picks a bomber and bans Necrot, I will be in trouble. If he does that, I think I'll have to ban the bomb. Yeah, I, I have to ban the Gnishak, honestly. I might be better off here facing the Narsus, uh facing the Ottomans than the Gnishak. There's no way I can survive the Gnishak. What what can I even do here? Nothing. Am I really gonna, gonna ban the Knishak instead of Armands? Nah, no, there's no way. He has so much 10 meter boost that I just have to pray for a Polymorph proc, but otherwise I lose. He's definitely gonna ban the Necro too. I mean, it's gonna put out shields and they generally are in bolster set, so it's very. Okay, he didn't ban it. It would have been very obvious ban. Okay, maybe we can survive it because. Um, now this Knishak is getting attack buff, so I don't think my mod can take a bomb hit, but Necrot should, and he's gonna protect one champion with the immunity, so Rodos can handle the bombs too. Okay, I, I think we're fine. I think we're fine, yeah. He, he was going for the... Hail Mary one shot on my Necrot and actually got very unlucky and did I get any reaction procs there? I feel like there was no reaction procs at all. Maybe there was but I didn't see it. But my Necrot is super tanky, of course. Oh, Mord survived again. Even against attack buff. I didn't think the Astralite had attack buff on it. Okay. Can't, can't, can't lose anymore. I feel like I'm super easy mark to the bomb teams, so if somebody has 
a little bit stronger bomb team, it's pretty much a guaranteed win against me. Okay, nice. Oh, we broke the 5.9k. <laughs> I was... I think I kind of did bad on the last video too. I was gonna break it and I didn't in the end. I guess we finally did, but I don't think... We gained a lot of points today, maybe like 20 points or something like that. We were talking on the stream today that if anybody knows, um, like, Tyler1 is like a very big content creator from League of Legends, very famous for being kind of, you know, outrageous and like uh, trolling and flaming and that kind of stuff. I, I think he was originally famous for like getting Perma banned like countless times in, in the game and being like a high level player but this year or this year and last year he did some kind of like kind of a new feat that not, nobody has ever done before and it wasn't in League of Legends but in chess and I, I saw multiple videos about it because I do follow some chess channels from time to time I'm not like a big chess player but it's kind of interesting and my brother has been super into it for a long time and he went from like a new player with like zero rating to 2k rating in like a year which is like a thing that hasn't been done before but he paid, paid like godless amount of uh, battles <laughs> and he was just you know getting 51% 51, 51 win ratio or something like that and grinding it up and even eventually just improving and actually being able to beat better players. Obviously, you know, chess is a um, trillion times more skillful than raid. In fact, it's there's no RNG in just chess. There's only, only skill in that game. Like, if you don't make any mistakes, you literally can't lose. And if you lose, you always made mistakes. So, a little bit different than raid. But, like, I saw a video from one, like, very high-level famous chess player, and he, he was talking about, you know, the... Um, fuck. He, he was... Yeah, we're fine. We, we can ban the UDK. We're okay with the cutter. He, he was talking about the mentali mentality of being able to do, like, thousands games or whatever the number of games the Tyler 1 guy was doing and only, only winning like every other battle, like how that's frustrating and how like normally people can't handle it and <laughs> they can't play that many games and lose that many, many of them. I think you kind of need, may maybe not as hardcore approach, but I think you need that style of approach in Raid Live Arena unless you have like godly account like even though you feel like you're better and you want to win but getting a lot higher win rate than 50 percent is not very easy especially if you have worse worse account than average that you meet and if you like only way to get really high win ratio is to have a godly account. It is what it is, but I mean, I guess some people can do it. Biohack and um... ah, fuck. What's the Spanish streamer? The one that is like very low spender. How can I not remember? I I like him. Oh, Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Oh, he's like not not a big spender, but both of them. Happen to be kind of fast for 
low spenders. And they happen to have some really good champions that synergize with speed teams. And I guess they have kind of high win ratios. I think Jacob has maybe a little bit higher and Biohacks, Biohack has more games played. But they certainly have like, you know, trillion times worse seconds than people at their, um, their rating outside of each other's, I guess. Th that's what I tell myself every time that I was like, it's okay, you know, N nothing you can do about it. It's a little bit weak mentality sometimes, and 50% win rate doesn't really chime well with me, but th there's some battles that literally there's not nothing that I can do about it, and if I win against them, it's gonna take a miracle or like them, you know, misclicking five times in a row or something like that. Okay, this battle though, even though I was just complaining, but I think this battle were totally fine. M more this, more this doing the work. We're locked out and we're not. It's easy as, as it is. I almost feel like putting more thumbnail on the video again, but I think the last library in a video had more than it too, so I can do it every time if I want people to click on them, but I'm super hyped about more though. I'm just very one-dimensional, I'm going with the same champions and same strategy every battle that I go second and I try to adapt whatever kind of speed team that they pick against me but if you can also do speed teams or some other comps and you have mod and you can adapt that I'm sure you can get a lot better results than I can do like early picking mod in every single battle and always going with Krotos and uh, Narsus if I can. By the way, I hate character passive. It's insane that that good champion also has that kind of passive. So Some champions are just super overloaded. Even if you like remove a skill or two from them, they will still be the best champions in the game. The, the difference is actually insane. Like, they, they should give the Galatir unkillable passive to like some other random reviver, like give that passive to Elva or like some, something like, like that. Why does Galatir have that passive when he's already so much better than any other reviver in the game? Okay. We, oh my god, dude, I, I feel like, I think it's over and then it's not again, and how many revives are you gonna pull? Just let me win, I feel like I'm gonna lose in the end still. I, I, I felt like I won this battle like multiple times, but am I still gonna lose in the end? Rotos can get like mass weak hits on the... Galatir. I feel like the wind condition here, I don't know if I have stolen enough health. The wind condition at this point would be to just um, block revive the Wukong. If I can do that, maybe my Rotos can solo the supports. We're locked out, oh fuck. Oh, not good. Please give me extra turn, I really need it. No? Okay, well. It's over. 
Gala tier Madrid's Katoo OP. Okay, I was gonna say that we're winning the battle even though I'm complaining about them, but nah, Gala tier is insanely OP. Madrid's can still do even though people kind of stop complaining about her since she's been in the game so long time. But even though Taras has fallen a little bit out of the classic arena meta, still every single team is running Maritska, so nerf both of these champions. They are they are broken. I'm I'm pissed. It feels annoying to lose 